Welcome back. So today we're going to be doing lap 10. This is a walkthrough for every single step. Um, again, if you complete this, you get 10 out of 10. Follow every single step. Do it the way I do it. So I've done a lot of the steps for you guys already. Um, so for example, just setting up these um, columns. So the question is right here on the side. So we're looking at 143 workers, their annual income, and their years of education. So the first step, so we're basically looking at linear regression. So I encourage you to watch the video we did, or I posted before this. Um, it's going to give you a detailed um, view on what we're doing. So we're trying to find a linear regression. We have to do some steps before that. So the first step is to draw a scatter diagram with education and income. Now, can you expect a positive or a negative relationship between the two variables in the group? So something we've talked about in the last video, we assume there's going to be a positive um, relationship, basically as education increases we expect income to be much higher as well so again the higher the education the more knowledge and skills that you have available meaning you're going to be paid more for the skills that you possess so um, first thing we're going to do we're going to highlight this column and then this column so our y which is our dependent um, is income our x is our independent um, which is education we're going to create a scatter diagram. So you're going to go to insert, you can click on scatter, and just basically just plot what you have. It should look something like this. Now, something I've mentioned in class multiple times is you have to have access titles. All right, give me one second. Okay, so you have to have access titles, you have to labor, label your x-axis and act, label your y, and you have to have a chart title. If you do not have this, you're automatically going to get docked two points. So just make sure you have everything labeled. Your x, in this case, is education. Your y, in this case, is your income. Again, put a chart title, showing the relationship, and then answer the question as well. The question is asking us, let me just move this around. The question is asking us, can we expect a positive or negative relationship? So because of this, we see that there's a positive value. Again, it's increasing, and they're all clustered together here. All right. Um, the next thing it asks us to do is calculate the sample covariance and um, the variance of education. So that's where we have SXY and S2X. So SXY is a sample covariance um, between the two variables. S2 uh, X is the sample variance for education. So the code for this is going to be for covariance equals covariance. It's going to be the sample one. And you're going to do array one and two. So we can just put education down, comma. And our second one is education. Control shift down, close your parentheses, and you should get 55.73. The next code we're going to use is our variance. So var.s, and we're looking for education. Control shift down, you should get 7.44. So you've done A and B, these two, sample covariance and um, your variance, they're important to calculate beta 1 and beta 0 in a bit. So now what we need to do is to estimate the linear regression that best fits the data. In other words, we want to create this formula. So we need beta zero and beta one, and we're going to interpret this uh, equation when we get our beta zero, beta one. So the first thing we need to do is fill out all of these um, rows first, or these columns, sorry. So x minus x bar. We know x bar, oh, give me a second. So we know x bar is, it means our average. So we want to find the average of education. So our average years of education is 15 years. Now we want to find y bar 2 because we're going to need that for column E. This is the average income 
between these 143 workers. So it's 69. So basically, this is in thousands of dollars. So it's basically sixty-nine thousand dollars. All right. So now we can start filling this out. We want to do x minus x bar. So equals. It's going to be our first x, which is twelve. You're going to subtract that by your x bar. So you know that your x bar is not going to be changing. X bar stays the same. So the way we do that, you go up here to where our code is. You're going to put a dollar signs in front of the letter and the dollar signs in between the letter and the number. So basically what this is telling Excel is to hold this value in place. So it's always going to equal um, X minus just this value. So you're just going to drag and drop that. All the way to 143. And you should have all the values. And if you just want to double check, you see how L2 stays the same. Okay. Now we're going to do the same for y bar. So equals y minus y bar. But remember to put the dollar signs. This holds it in place. You hit enter. Again, this is in thousands of dollars. So it's not just six, it's six thousand dollars. The average isn't sixty-nine, it's sixty-nine thousand dollars. Oh god. So all the way to this, again, you can double check if everything is correct. The code is correct. Awesome. Next, again, these rows or these columns tell you exactly what you need to do. X minus X bar multiplied by Y minus Y bar. So it's going to be equals this cell multiplied by this cell. You're going to hit enter. You're going to drag and drop this as well. Again, this is just another step in calculating your beta 0, beta 1. Oh. Okay. Next one we need to calculate is x minus x bar squared. So it equals x minus x bar, and we're going to use a caret and two. So it does the math for you. Again, if the number's not exactly right, do not worry. Excel, um, this is something that we've run into a problem uh, throughout the semesters. So just don't worry if you get a couple different numbers than what I have. You will be fine. Again, I'm worried about the process. You understand how to do this process. So again, you can double check the code for the second one. It's going to be D3, D4, D5, and so forth. Okay, cool. All right, so the next step is to calculate your beta 1, beta 0. So we have everything we need so far. There's a couple different ways you can do it. So you can calculate your SXY is your sample covariance. Your S2X is your sample variance. Now, the two ways you can do it is, so column F, column G. If you divide the total of both those columns, you'll get your beta 1, or you can just divide these two values right here. So if you just equals sum And then equals sum of column G. And then if you divide these two, just to double check, you'll get 7.48. Now this, this column right here, this is the sum of column F, X minus X bar multiplied by Y minus Y bar, the sum of that divided by the sum of x minus x bar squared, it's going to give us 7.48. Or a faster way is equals this divided by this. You'll get the same exact number. So again, whichever way you prefer, if you want to take an extra step, by all means do that. I'm all about saving time, so that's how we're going to do it. Okay, so that's what our beta 1 is. This is what our slope is. So beta 1 right here, where beta 1 multiplied by education 
is 7.48. Now this is in thousands of dollars. So we're gonna multiply this by a thousand and you will see what the impact is. All right, beta zero. The formula for beta zero is gonna be equals. Now it's Y bar, so you need your Y bar. Subtracted. So basically we're just manipulating a function subtracted by beta one. So we know what our beta one is. Multiplied by our X bar. You hit enter. So this is what our beta zero is. Beta zero should be negative 39.37. Again, it's in thousands of dollars. So what this is saying is if we're not, if we have zero years of education, so if we have zero years of education, so if education equals zero, this whole term equals zero, beta zero is gonna equal negative 39,000. Now, how is that possible? Now, the reason why this is not an accurate representation is because we're only looking at education. This is not an accurate model. There's other things that we should have involved. Um, gender, location, population density, degree, and so forth. <coughs> so these are big things to make sure you include. So basically our formula, let me see. Oh, I can't do it like that. Um, here, give me a second. All right. So the formula, if we were to, if I asked you to write this out, it would look like this, basically. So income equals negative 39,000 um, plus uh, 7.48 multiplied by education. This is your formula. This is what we created here based on all the numbers that we have. This is our beta zero. That's our beta one. This is our slope coefficient. And the variable of interest is education and income. Now I would want you to uh, interpret the slope. So the slope is education and income. So for every one year of education, your expected income increases by $7,480. So this is what shows our relationship. Okay. Now, part D and E, so D is basically saying, again, I need you to interpret this estimated uh, equation in a couple sentences, so make sure you do that. If you don't do that, you'll get doc points as well. Um, make the column and insert the fitted values and residuals for each observation. Observation, compute the SSE. So now, what our goal is to calculate Y hat. Y hat is our predicted value based on our parameters. We have beta zero, we have beta one, now we wanna know what Y hat equals. So our y hat is going to be equals beta zero plus, sorry, plus beta one multiplied by your x. So each year's education. This, so this is going to give us the actual value of what your income should be based on 12 years of education, just based on our model and our data. Now, another key thing you need to do is make sure you put these placeholders. So when you put the dollar signs, it holds them in place because beta zero, beta one are not gonna change. The only thing changing is our X. So based on this, in real life, our actual value is 75,000. So this individual who's making, who only has 12 years of education is making $75,000 a year. Based on our model, they should be making $50,000 a year. So again, just make sure you understand the concept behind that, why that is. So again, we're just looking at our model. There's a lot of other things that aren't included into this model and that could be changing the value. So again, just drag and drop all of these. So you'll, you're basically calculating your Y hat. And just double check your values. So the second person who has 20 years of education, they're making 83,000 in real life. And based on our model, they should be making over $110,000 a year. So again, this is Y hat. This is our predicted value based on our model. This Y right here in column C is our actual value. So E is our residual. It's actual minus predicted. So y hat is our predicted value. Actual is our value in C. So it's actual minus predicted. So it's going to be equals 
your actual value, which is y, subtracted by your predicted value. You're going to do that all the way down. This is the difference between the, the actual minus predicted. So what our model says and what real life says. All right. Now, e squared is just a, the square of this residual. So equals whatever your residual is, caret 2. And you're going to drag and drop. Oh, God. So when you get these, uh, these errors, all you have to do is just readjust the columns, and you'll be good to go. Okay, now your sum of squared errors, or your SSE, is just your sum of this column. So it's going to be the sum of column J. So you should get some crazy high number like this. So you've done question D. Now you also want to calculate the standard error of your estimate. So based on our data, what's our standard of error? Now the formula for standard of error, it's going to be equals the square root. You're going to put parentheses your SSE divided by n minus 1. So our n minus 1 in this case is, our n is 143 minus 1 would be 142. And you should get a value 42.14. Now that's going to be important for part E. Alright, so our next step is um, part E. So this is carry out a test for the null hypothesis that beta 1 equals 0 against the alternative that beta 1 is not equal to 0. So can we conclude that there's statistically significant effect on of education on income? So in order to do this, we need to calculate the standard error of beta 1. So basically, this is going to show us if our variable is significant. So we're going to carry out a t-test. This is something that we do very commonly in econometrics to know if our variable has some form of impact. So if it does have an impact, it's going to be statistically significant. If it doesn't, it's not going to be significant. So if beta 1 equals 0, that means there's no significance. If beta 1 is not equal to 0, so our alternative, that means there is some form of impact. So for this, the formula for standard error of beta 1, it's going to be equals your standard error of the estimate, which we calculated. And then it's going to be divided by the square root of n minus 1, which is 142, multiplied by your sample, so the, um, the variance of education. What you're going to get is 1.30. Now, to calculate the t-test, or to find out the t-value, we have everything that we need. It's basically your beta 1, whatever the coefficient value is. So coefficient value divided by your standard error for that variable. And you're going to get 5.7385. Now, if I don't give you anything, you should just compare this to 1.96 or negative 1.96 or 1.645. Either case, this number, 5.74, let's just say, this falls in the rejection region. We can reject our null hypothesis and conclude that education does have an impact on income. So again, I need you to put that into words, um, carry out all these tests. So that's all of linear regression. This is, if you can carry out this lab, this is going to be a big portion of your exam on uh, your final exam. So there's going to be a question very similar to this. So if you can follow the steps, you know how to do it, you'll be good to go. If you guys have any questions, drop a comment, email me, set up a Zoom meeting. I'm more than happy to help. I hope you guys are staying healthy. I will see you guys soon. Thank you.